OK, good afternoon. It's two o'clock. Let's give it a start. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, please mute yourself while um, I am or one of the other program uh, speakers is, is talking. And um, so before I do anything, I just wanted to mention that we will record this session. And so we will also publish it on the website so people can afterwards have a look at it or uh, you can even uh, look at it yourself again. And so just to be sure that everybody is uh, is aware of this uh, recording and that we will share this on our website. So my name is Erwin van Eyden. I'm the manager of, uh, of the Eindhoven office and responsible for what happens in the Benelux and together with my colleagues uh, from Bu Budapest and, and France, we are organizing uh, this webinar today. Um, this is one of a series of, uh, of webinars today, of course, in particular about data science, but next week we will have one about uh, cybersecurity and we will have also one on fintech. You will hear about that later, let's say, but the, uh, before the, uh, the closing of this uh, event. Um, so we will have a we, we set up a, a program for today, a small program. So we'll have a few speakers, uh, one of which is Renata Madera de Carvalho. She is working at the technology of the University of, uh, of Eindhoven, uh, but also program lead uh, within the digital for the data science track. And she will share you that's all the relevant information about what's happening where you are in the data science program. We are very enthusiastic ourselves about the program, but it's very important, of course, to get a real story from the ground. So we have uh, invited um, um, Marina. She will. Tell, she's an alumna of our program. She did the data science uh, track, and so she can share you all the insights about what it is to to be part of the of the program and to be part of of the community. Um, then there's time for Q&A because we would like to have this a very interactive session. So if you have any questions, you can put them either in the chat box or you raise your hand and then we can unmute your mic and then you can pop your question. Uh, please reserve the questions for after the speakers so we can do that all at once. And for the right answers, we have, let's say, okay, of course, the speakers, we have ourselves, people from the master school office who can uh, explain the details of the submission uh, uh, program uh, about the deadlines, about uh, scholarships, tuitions fees, uh, and the like. Um, and last but not least, um, I think we should just start. So I would like to give the floor to uh, Renata. You can share your screen and uh, please, the floor is yours. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. OK, good. So hello, everyone. Uh, as Erwin presented, my name is Renata Medeiros de Carvalho, and I am the program lead for the Data Science Master Program at EIT Digital. And my presentation today is about the program as a whole. So well, let's start with a, a quick image that shows you how the program is structured. Yeah. So. The program starts with a kickoff event, and then I, I, I will talk a bit later about events. Uh, so we start with a kickoff event. Then you have the first year of studies. Well, it's a master program. It's two years of study. The first year, it's where we call in the entry university. It's where you learn about the technical and the common base courses, and also a little bit of i &E already. After the first year and before you, you join the second university for the second year, then there is a summer school. I will also give a bit more details about the summer school later. Uh, as for the second year, you join another university. The most important information here is it should be another university in a different country from the first university. And in the second year, in the second university, you go more in deep into one of the aspects of data science. We are also discussing uh, which specializations we offer, but this happens in the second year. And when you are done with uh, your program, then there is a graduation ceremony, well, an event to receive the diploma and also an EIT digital certificate. But 
now that you've, you've seen uh, very quickly what is the program or how is this the, the structure of the program, why to study in the EIT Digital Master's course. So the first idea is you can choose your own curriculum because when you choose which university you want to go as first year and which university you want to go as second year, then your curriculum is already a bit different than the other student that chose a different path. Yeah? Uh, as I said, it's two years, two different universities, but you also receive two different degrees, which is very nice. There is a summer school, a two weeks event in, the, in, the, uh, in between the years. Um, everywhere you go, there are the co-location centers where you can find some support on the INE stuff. Um, if you one day think about creating your own company, your own startup, then the co-location center has all kinds of facilities and support for you to do that. Um, when you graduate, then you are also able to join the alumni uh, and there you meet uh, previous students which are now professionals in different career paths, uh, some of them with their own companies. And in the end, what you have is a world class network because you will meet students from all over the world. But um, just to give you a bit more about the data science course as well program. So I, I, do, I do not really need to explain a lot, but the data has been generated by all kinds of systems and all kinds of hardware. And the most important is everyone wants to learn what the data can tell. Yeah? When you study data science, then you learn how to deal with this data. It doesn't matter if it's a very few amount of data or huge amounts of data, depending on which kind of system you are dealing with, but also which kind of analysis should be performed and how to perform the analysis. But most important, how to transform the results that you get from the analysis into actionable information. And I, will, I, I want to emphasize here because what is important when you study data science is that you really are able to understand the results, the impact of the analysis that you, that you made, the limitations of it, and that when you provide information from the data, that this information should be correct and cannot be harmful to society. Yeah? And then you also will learn how to work on multidisciplinary aspects because data is not being generated only by computer systems. Yeah? There are biomedical data and all other kinds of data. So it's in the end a multidisciplinary. So coming back to our actionable information, which I said it needs to be correct and not harmful. I want to give you some examples. Yeah? Uh, bad examples of people applying data science, yeah? because it's very easy to say I did some analysis. My analysis is better than the analysis done previously but your analysis is just wrong. Yeah, so and here you can see examples of AI that just went wrong and saw uh, pictures of black men and they called as primates because they couldn't uh, distinguish between men and, and, yeah, and, and the other animals. Yeah? Or in a healthcare system that was applied in the US where the algorithm was just racist. Yeah? And as a third example, you see there a correlational study that shows that the total revenue generated by arcades is correlated with the computer science doctorates awarded in the US. But that does not mean that if we play more games in the arcades, there will be more people getting a PhD yeah, or a doctorate. So when you do an analysis, you really need to be able to understand what is the impact you need to be able to understand the result and make sure that it's true what you are affirming in the end and again not harmful yeah and as i said in data science we do not really uh, learn only how to apply we learn also on how to make this analysis in the correct way and how to be critical to the analysis that we are doing so um, I showed you that we have the first year and the second year. Where can you study 
data science. Well, we are a pretty big consortium with 12 universities, so there are quite a lot of choices that can be done. As I said, you need to choose one university to go for the first year, and in the first year, uh, you learn the core competencies. Yeah, so there is a bit of INE already, but uh, in any case, in any university that you choose as first year, you will learn data mining, machine learning, statistics, and how to deal with big data, yeah? how to manage them. So these are the basics. And of course, there are a bit difference um, in the courses, but uh, in, in principle, these are the core competencies that you will learn in the first year. Then in the second year, as I mentioned before, you need to choose a specialization. And as I said, we are a big consortium, so we offer 11 different specializations. Yeah? And each specialization uh, is supposed to give you in-depth knowledge in one of the aspects of data science. Yeah, Data science is very big. It's not really possible for you to be expert in all kinds of things. So here it's where you choose if you want to be expert, for example, in business process intelligence, if you want to learn how to deal with data that it's distributed in, from different systems, if you want if, if you want to be better in the infrastructures that allow for data man, big data management and analysis, if you want to go deeper into the algorithms itself, algorithms for machine learning for big data management and business analytics, or the multimedia and the web science solutions for big data, if you want to learn how to deal with data in real time, so you do, you cannot wait until tomorrow to say something about the data that it's been generated today, or maybe you want to deal with data that it's written in a free text form, so you need to really understand what is the language uh, because it's it's naturally written. Um, then in Trento we have the specialization big data variety and veracity, and there you really learn on how to uh, analyze how well how true the results and the and the and the, anal uh, the analysis that you did uh, can how 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 this is true yeah so how how to interpret the results as I explained before then in twenty uh, the specialization offers data science for persona information so how can you deal with data and propose solutions that can come back to the society directly and affect people directly. Then we have uh, uh, in hand the algorithms for artificial intelligence and data mining that are applied for business intelligence. And then finally, we have also a specialization where you can study a bit more about the medical data that it's generated by hospitals and by uh, uh, these big machines that we have in the hospitals with a lot of sensors. So first year we have the core competences, the second year we have the specialization, and in between we have a summer school. Summer school is a two-week event where well, you go to a summer school. We have quite some summer schools happening all over Europe. Then you have the right to choose to each summer school you want to attend to. So you go there, you spend two weeks there working on a business case. In the end, there is a pitch competition. But, well, as this is a grade and it goes toward to, to your transcript, then in the end you need to, to generate a final report uh, to be finalized in your transcript. If you study data science, what are the career opportunities there? Well, uh, data science is uh, very trendy for a couple of years already. So it's just that the number of jobs that are there are simply growing uh, every day more. You can find graduate in Zoom working in all kinds of technology companies, but also in the healthcare sector. Yeah. Um, in, in so, so social services, in, in all kinds of things that, in all kinds of domains that you can imagine. And some of our graduates also uh, successfully created their own startups. But 
in a nutshell, you can finish your studies in data science and you can become either a data scientist where you, you, you are expert on business intelligence or market analyst. You can be a data analyst or more on the analytics on the algorithm side and the business analyst. Uh, or maybe as a data engineer, where you understand more a bit of the infrastructures, the data architecture, yeah, and the and the quantitative analy uh, analysis. Or you can be a business intelligence developer, where you really are in the core of or of the algorithms of machine learning, and the systems that are developed around it. Um, so how to apply? Well. It's, it's through the EIT Digital Web uh, site. You can go there and apply. The uh, admission, the, uh, the application period is open now since uh, February 9. It's already the second period of applications and it will be closed on uh, April 11. Yeah, it's open to everyone, EU and non-EU uh, citizens. And when you apply on 11 of April, after a couple of weeks, you should be able to receive a letter saying that if you were accepted or not. In the case that you were accepted, then by 1st of June, you should be able to accept the offer and say and confirm that you want to pursue this program. And there are scholarship available, um, but for more information, just check the website. But basically, what we check when you apply for the program is what is your bachelor degree? If it is in a relevant field of studies, yeah, so we, we need to make sure that you are able to follow the master program. It's a master program, so we expect you to already have some knowledge coming from the bachelor. Then you also have to show your proof of English because the whole program is in English. It doesn't matter to which country or to which university you go. And we also check your motivation letter to understand why do you think that this program is for you and how motivated you are to pursue this. Now, to finalize, this is a bit more uh, my, uh, my experience from what I've seen. I, I am being program lead for a bit more than five years already now. And what I've seen and what I've learned with the other students so how, how do you know if this is the program for you? Well, first, you, if you want to, to gain some international experience, yeah, if you want to uh, be involved with other students from different uh, cultures, different countries, if you also want to learn about innovation and entrepreneurship as a minor, and innovation and entrepreneurship don't think as only about creating the startup, it's also about how do you structure uh, new ideas that you have? How are you able to present these ideas in, uh, in terms that you are convincing people that this, is a, this idea is good and it's relevant? Um, you also know that the INE events, so the kickoff and the summer school, are good for your skills because it will make you present or prepare pitches, yeah? work on a business cases. Uh, develop new ideas. So this will just improve your skills. It, it will also allow you to interact with other students, yeah, also from other cultures. And of course, if the financial support, whatever you get, um, it, will it will be helpful, then I would say that this is the right program for you. If you have, if you need more information, if it's about applications, scholarships, and this kind of things, please contact the master school office. And if it is about the scientific aspe aspects in terms of the contents, is this is my bachelor sufficient to have uh, to, to, to pursue data science, or what do I need to pursue data science? Then please do not hesitate to contact me. Well, thank you. Thank you, Renata. Really interesting story, and I think data science is shows to be a very relevant topic nowadays, and you can really have an impact on what's happening in society. Uh, thank you again. So let's move on now to Marina Angeloska. Marina is one of the graduates, uh, so she has lived the life of a master school student, and so she will tell her her story about uh, that. So Marina, go ahead. Yeah. 
Thank you, Erwin. Uh, I hope you can all see my screen, the the, the slides. Yes, all good, all good. But make, make yeah. it a slideshow, please. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, perfect. OK, yeah, I think it's maybe with a bit of a delay from what I hear, but uh, yeah, I hope everything goes well. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'm uh, Marina and uh, I'm an EIT Digital alumni, which means that now I'm in the EIT Digital alumni network. Uh, and I actually graduated and I was also a student um, in the master school. So that's why I'm also here today to share more about uh, my story and my experiences as an EIT Digital student and to give you more a personal perspective and yeah, why I actually uh, enjoyed my studies and uh, yeah, um, to share basically my experiences. Uh, and yeah, actually, before I dive into the slides, I must say that uh, I was actually really excited uh, to prepare these slides because they're all of these nice memories that I had in my two years of studies. So it was also kind of a nice summary of all the nice memories that I had uh, in those two years. Um, yeah, so a little bit about myself. Uh, yeah, as I said, I'm Marina. I'm originally from uh, Skopje, from North Macedonia, but I'm currently living and working uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, and I'm currently working as a data scientist at uh, Bold.com, which is one of the largest uh, e-commerce uh, companies in the Netherlands. Um, I was an EIT Digital student uh, in the data science track uh, from 2018 until uh, 2020. Uh, and I had my entry university in Tui uh, Eindhoven in the Netherlands. And the second year of my studies was in KDH uh, Stockholm. Uh, and I will share uh, my experiences from uh, both uh, basically years, but also from all the activities that we had uh, in between. Um, yeah, and actually in the last semester of the studies uh, from EA to digital, uh, basically while you're doing your second year, there is an um, uh, internship basically. Uh, and you can, in most cases, pick wherever you want to do the internship. So in my case, um, while I was in Stockholm, I actually found an opportunity in the Netherlands. So I came back here uh, and I did my master's thesis internship at the same company where I'm actually working now. So it was also a nice career path for me to kind of start my internship there and then continue working as a full-time data scientist. Um, yes, so in the next slide, I'll share uh, yeah, my story and some of the best moments or the reasons why I personally would really recommend uh, this uh, program to you as well. So first, uh, of course, it's a dual degree program. So that's, I think, uh, one of the biggest perks as well uh, of this program, because at the end, you'll get two diplomas from the two universities that you pick and the data digital certificate as well. Um, and personally, from my experience and from my friends uh, who studied with me, it's really a big advantage in finding jobs and internships as well. Um, but it also is a great mix of tech and innovation courses. So, of course, you learn and specialize in data science. But what I personally really liked was that there were a lot of um, innovation courses or business case studies, pitches, and just trying to think a bit outside of the technical world and actually try to think how can you apply the things you're learning in data science, like more from the other side as well. What can you do with your ideas and how can you push them forward? So that's not, I think that's typical and it's a really nice mix because it's still a minor. So uh, there are only a few courses like that, which give you a nice perspective. Uh, and these are actually some of the pictures from the two universities that I was in. Uh, the first two pictures on the left side are from the university and TUE. Uh, I must say it's not always as sunny in Stockholm and in Netherlands as in these pictures. Uh, but uh, yeah, there are sunny days as well. Uh, and on the right side is the university and the library in Stockholm. Uh, I really enjoyed both campuses. So that's why I uh, picked uh, these pictures here. Yeah, another reason why I um, really enjoyed it was because I, aside of the studies, I really had the feeling during the whole uh, two years that I belonged to a community. So there were a lot of events organized by the universities, but, but also by AT Digital, like some uh, meetups just to meet with other uh, fellow students, some hackathons where we could take part, some just casual gatherings or pizza sessions with some nice presentations um, from other students. There were also job fairs supported by the universities in the AT Digital uh, co-location centers, which can also help you find an internship or um, yeah, if you need some help outside of the studies. Uh, and it's really great that there is a big alumni network. So even now after graduating, I'm part of the alumni network and there are still events happening from all the graduates. They're even now, I think, in Spain doing a co-living um, co experience together. So everyone who wants can join and stay together to work uh, from abroad for a while. 
And uh, yeah, it's really nice that you have this feeling of a community. Uh, and these are some of the pictures from yeah a few events, not all, that uh, I took part in. Some uh, presentations, fairs, uh, pizza sessions and um, trips to some companies. Okay. Uh, yeah, another thing uh, uh, about EAT Digital, I think that most students really like is that, uh, well, there is a kickoff at the beginning of, of the first year. And in our case, we went to Paris for a full weekend, which was supported by uh, the master school. Uh, where we get a chance to meet all 400 students from my cohort and it, we worked on business cases and projects but it was really a nice yeah, way to start the year and actually see how big the whole community is. Um, there was also a summer school and a winter school. Um, for the winter school it was uh, in my case in the first studies so it was in the same uh, city in Eindhoven uh, and we met with students from uh, the whole Netherlands there. We worked together on business cases and uh, had some fun together as well. Uh, and then in the summer school, I picked myself uh, to go to Tallinn in Estonia. So I, we were there for two weeks. And some of these pictures are uh, also from the summer school. Uh, the first, yeah, actually the pictures on the left side, uh, basically the three. Um, they were worked uh, on projects. So usually like from uh, like from nine to three, four, I think it was something like that. We worked on our big uh, like projects in groups. There were some inspiring sessions. We went to some startups to explore the startup scene and some um, yeah, tech uh, companies there as well in Estonia. There were a lot of opportunities to kind of yeah, find out more about the culture and what is happening in the country itself and the university. But we also worked on um, cases together, but there were also a lot of fun activities after um, in the afternoons and the weekends. Like uh, we had a boat trip, um, we also went um, to some adventure parks together. We had sightseeing and all of these nice other things which help you also to expand your network and meet more friends. And from my experience, it's actually like a lot of the people that I met during the summer and the winter school are now also living in uh, the Netherlands. So it's really easy to kind of, because it's really a big community and there are people from the whole world which move around and you don't know where they will end up. So it's also easy to stay connected and then meet these friends that you made over these years in all of these events uh, in uh, yeah in different places um, uh, in Europe or in the world. Um, yeah, and um, something important from for us uh, uh, is that also we got support even outside of classes. So um, as Renata already mentioned a bit, there are yeah, there is the community and there is the co-location center in every city basically that can help you with some guidance or support if you need for a startup or for anything you want to do maybe uh, after classes outside of the regular like uh, study flow. And in our case, during our first studies, we went to a hackathon and we won the hackathon. And then after that, we uh, wanted to pursue the idea. And we got really huge support from um, the coaches uh, in United Digital because they were also guiding us and helping us in this process, what to do, uh, what can we do next to test our ideas, how to build it even yeah support us in brainstorming and other things as well uh, so we actually also started like our own um, project as a startup kind of during our studies and we were also accepted in the accelerator program in kth during the second year so yeah this is just uh, to sh yeah to tell you that there are a lot of opportunities if you actually want to do something more um yeah we're not working currently on the on the startup uh, we're just uh, it's still there we also have full-time jobs but there are also some other um, yeah, friends of mine or students who really pursued their startups after their studies as a full-time job as well. So that's also good to have in mind uh, as an option. Uh, yeah, and uh, for me, AT Digital was a lot more than just the courses because there were so many activities. And of course, the fact that you study data science, you advance in the field and you get the degrees was uh, amazing, but also yeah, uh, I made a lot of friendships uh, during the studies. Uh, yeah, I lived in two different countries, got the chance to also learn about the Estonian uh, culture and uh, tech um, ecosystem. And yeah, now I also have like a huge network of friends that you can yeah always uh, find around uh, Europe. Um, and these are some of the pictures uh, from, yeah, from the two countries. Uh, something that I really liked about TUE was uh, that there was also a Christmas market in the inside of the campus uh, during the Christmas period. So, yeah, I put this picture here like uh, that we basically sometimes ever after classes, uh, we could go ice skating when there were all kinds of activities organized as well as part of the university. Um, 
yeah and um yeah i think in general i uh yeah really had a great time in these two years and uh, yeah learned a lot and now i'm working as a data scientist uh, uh after my uh, graduation uh, so yeah that was uh, a bit about my story uh, thanks for listening and uh, if you want to yeah ask me something um, else uh, or if you just want to know more uh, you can uh, contact me on uh, linkedin here is my uh, profile okay uh, over thank to you, you Irving. <laughs> thank you very much uh, uh, marina it, it's pretty clear that i was born a few decades too early and um, okay uh, let's see um so let's move on uh, let, to the questions because we still have about half an hour and we want to to answer as, as much questions as we can. So like I mentioned, uh, you can put uh, the questions in the chat box. I already uh, see a few or you can raise your hand and I will give you the, the floor. Um, so basically when it comes to let's say the experience, then uh, I, I, will, I will forward the questions uh, to Marina when it's more about the program. It's, it's either uh, Renata and we also have uh, Professor Lendak from Elta University in Budapest in the call. So uh, either of those can, can answer any questions. And then we of course have, uh, when it comes more to the submission process, et cetera, we have Ellen from the Master School Office and uh, she can answer all those detailed questions on that part. So let's first, let's have a look at, uh, at the questions. Um, I see two uh, both related uh, to, let's say, the English requirement, and maybe that is something, Ellen, for you to, to answer. Um, first question is, if you've graduated your, uh, your bachelor from a Dutch university in English, aren't you automatically assumed to have a level of English proficiency or do you have to attend an English exam uh, still? And related to that is a question also about the English. Is there a, any waiver for use of English for those of us who started uh, uh, a bachelor education of English language? Yes, so I can take these questions. Hi, everyone. My name is Elin and I work at the Master School office. And regarding uh, English, um, so if you have studied in Europe, or well, in a non-English uh, speaking country, then uh, the English test can unfortunately not be waived. Uh, it's only if you studied in the US, Canada, UK, Ireland, uh, Australia, or New Zealand. Okay, thank you very much. Um, maybe this one is also for you. Uh, what's the ac acceptance rate for students outside Europe and especially from Africa? Yes, um, that's a quite tricky question to answer, I would say, because uh, we don't really have um, any quota or anything like that based on country. We just basically accept the people that apply um, and that uh, yeah, the, the best applicants that apply every year. So I cannot really provide any numbers for that, unfortunately. OK, so you just look at the, the, the quality of the application and that's basically what decides whether people are are in the, the program. OK, thank you very much. Um, maybe that's, that's one for Marina. Is it possible to connect the program with a half time job, let's say uh, 20 hours a week? And would you re recommend such a solution? Uh, I personally didn't have uh, any um, uh, job during my studies, but I know some of um, my friends had part time jobs in the first year. I think it also depends uh, how you want to spend it. I think theoretically you can do it if you want to be really busy, but the program like requires a lot of, uh, there are a lot of classes and going to the university and there are a lot of activities that you can benefit from. So uh, yeah, I think technically you can, uh, but it depends uh, how, what you want to get uh, out of it and uh, yeah, how busy you want to be. <laughs> yeah, and how smart you are maybe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of, course, of course, you still need to, to do all the exams. Um, let's see. Um, is there an option of starting the university program in February or is it only with a September semester? Who wants to answer that? Alan, perhaps, or Renata is opening the mic. Yeah, I can answer that. So unfortunately, it's not possible to start the program in February. The program is only open to be started in September. Okay, that's clear. 
Um, let me see. I apply to one of the masters in the first period. Is it possible to apply to another one? Um, yeah, let's see. And Perhaps I can take this question. Okay, go ahead. Yes, um, unfortunately not. You can only apply to uh, one program in one of the periods. And how about changing uh, places once you join the program? Uh, there is a possibility for this, uh, nothing that we can promise that we can offer every year, but in previous years we have been able to offer the entry year students to apply in November during your entry year to apply to change uh, for your exit year, but this has to be approved by both the entry and exit university, so um, we cannot promise anything, but uh, there has been this possibility before. Right, okay, thank you. And Renata, for you? Uh, how are the applications ranked? Yeah, How's so as, as, as I mentioned in my presentation, we look at your bachelor and uh, the, the quality in terms of uh, do you have enough competences around what we expect in data science. And for example, we expect in data science that you already have knowledge in programming, in databases, in statistics, in all these kind of things. So we judge, do you have the pre-required knowledge to be able to follow? Then we also look at your motivation letter to understand a bit more about you and why do you want to join the program? If you really understand uh, what data science is and what do you want to learn on the, with the program? Um, we look at your grades in, in the true scripts. Um, yeah. And then based on all these criteria, then we rank the students. Okay, and uh, apparently some universities like Polytechnico and KTH, they mentioned that they only accept students from computer science or an engineer's uh, bachelor. Um, um, so do the others also make the, those distinctions? Um, so so how, how, how is the, so how does it work? Yeah, so each, each university actually has different requirements on joining their programs. And it doesn't matter if you are applying through EAT Digital, it's the local requirements the, in that case that take place. And then you need to meet the requirements of both the entry and the exit university. It's true that a couple of universities only accept computer science and engineering, but most of the universities, for most of the universities, that, that's not true. What we look at your transcripts is really the knowledge. As I said, we expect programming, data structures, uh, databases, uh, some mathematics like linear algebra or statistics. Yeah, and uh, also if you have some already machine learning, AI from the bachelor is also a plus. But uh, that's what we look, and then it doesn't matter if you if you have the bachelor in mechanical engineering. If you are still able to show that you have knowledge in these domains, then most of the universities would be able to accept you. Right, thank you. Another question, um, somebody noticed that uh, he or she, uh, he uh, selected the incorrect entry university in the application um, and he already uh, paid, uh, paid for, the, uh, for the submission. Uh, is there anyone, anything he can do to change that? Yes, I can take this question. Um, yeah. This depends on if you sent your application during period one or if you have sent it now in, uh, during period two because um, the reviewing has already started for period one applications, so there we are not able to do any changes. Um, but if you are applying now in the second period that is still open, then you can send an email to us at the Master School office and we can help you to change this. So send an email to masterschool at eatdigital.eu and we can help you with this. Okay, that's clear. Okay, another question. It says, I am currently working as a data scientist and have a bachelor in information technology. Does my work experience as a data scientist add any value to my application? I, I can take this one. And indeed, it, it, adds, it adds value to the application because another thing that I forgot to mention that we check is also your CV because not all the knowledge needs to come from the bachelor. We also count the knowledge that you acquire during internships or even jobs. Okay, okay. 
And a question about, especially I think uh, for, for the German uh, uh, students, that is, so they they uh, um, um, they they finish the final semester of the bachelor's rather late in in the season, and of course we 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 start already in September with the program. How does that work? I'm not sure for who, who should take this. I, I can take this one, yeah. and okay. unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately, you cannot you cannot start a master if you did not completely finish your bachelor. So, in order to be able to start in September, we expect you to have really completely finished your bachelor. Okay. Um, let me see the that question. So I have to read it first because for, I know what it uh, what it is. Mm. Yeah, that's that's a question about somebody at University of Twenty been selected to participate in a study tour in Asia in the first module of the master uh, of the master program worth ten e, uh, ECs and. Um, would these 10 ECVs be eligible as as electives and and instead of um, of combining it so that they can combine it with our, our master program? So would the 10 ECTS of another program be let's say eligible for electives within our program? Uh, that that actually depends on the university that you are choosing to go. Um, I would say that most universities would see these as also uh, credits that they can take into the program. Depending on which university, it might be that instead of 60 CTS from the first year, you might have to take 65 or something like that, because it really depends on the entry program or, well, entry or exit, but how, how much space there is in the program to have 10 CTS as elective, and then some universities also have requirements on then to be able to get these credits, you need to, to write a report or something like that. But then it's basically depending on which university you, you would go. OK. And then a question, is there any structure to follow or do you have any tips um, to suggest about the motivation letter and the business idea? That's maybe, uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe Renate, you can say something about it, but maybe Marina, you can share your experience also. But, but let's say at least what you did to motivate your your application uh, back then. But Renata, you first. OK, so when we read the motivation letter, what we want to see is that you understand what the program is about, that you know what you want to get from it. Yeah, so what kind of professional do you want to be later on? And is this the right program to be to be then that professional? Um, and why do you want to be that professional? What, the, what in your life made you discover that this is, well, the career that you want to, to follow? OK. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if the 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 guides are the same as uh, now as when I apply, I applied. Uh, but in general, I also had to provide like a business idea. I think uh, I, yeah, probably the same. <laughs> I see you nodding. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, for my motivation letter, uh, I think yeah, I was mainly focusing like to really express my actual motivation of why I want to join the program and how it will fit my like future development and why I'm particularly interested in data science, but also in the fact that it, it has minor in innovation and entrepreneurship. So you have to kind of show the mindset that you don't really want to do only technical courses because this program is more than that. You have to also like the other part and actually want more, you know, to make something out of your ideas if you have any. So I think that yeah, my advice to also kind of make it like as a whole story um, based on what the program also provides and the um, places that you, the specialization maybe even uh, you want to pick. Okay. And uh, yeah, and to be yourself, to really say something personally about uh, you as a person, uh, I think that's really important as well. Okay. Okay. That's a good tip. Thanks very much. 
Uh, another quick, well, there was somebody that raised his or her hand is now gone again. So if you would like to have the floor, please uh, raise your hand again. Um, but Marina, the question about um, about the choice for the Swedish or the or the Dutch uh, program. In your case, of course, you you know what happened at the TUE and not so much probably at the E20. Uh, but so having been a Dutch student from both universities, um, um, well, do you have any any suggestions about, let's say, what topic that you maybe prefer, although you did both? Yeah, um, I think it's different uh, where you do your first and your second uh, year, because in the second year, for example, for me in Stockholm, I had more electives to pick from and more technical courses like data mining and um, uh, distributed systems, because there was a specialization there. So in the second year, from my experience, we really dive deeper into more hands-on experience and it was more practical. A lot of assignments, not that much like big exams. Um, but in the first year in TUE, it was more like different aspects of data science, like a little bit of everything, kind of statistics. There was visualization. There was also data engineering. So a little bit of base. And then in the second year, based on this, you can pick your studies. So I think in general, the second year in TUE would be different than my first year because, yeah, then you get to pick more electives. So I cannot really compare how it would be if I did my second year in TUE. Uh, but what I can say is that I really like the mix in my case um, of for the two programs. Uh, if you have more questions about this, feel free to ask me even after the session. <laughs> Because it's indeed. not the right or wrong answer, I cannot indeed. provide Always a short a one. Personal favor, right? Of, of a personal, person, uh, a personal choice, indeed, indeed. Um, another question: So, are certificates of knowledge a useful tools if your bachelor degree doesn't cover all the subjects that are required? I, I see you nodding, Renata. Yeah. So, um, what we want to know is how far your knowledge is in certain topics yeah so maybe if you do not have in your bachelor but you follow the Coursera course and you have the certificate in the end that's also a way for us to know how much knowledge you got in that in that aspect and then it, 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 we just count as it was in your bachelor yeah what we what we really need to see in your application is you have enough knowledge in all the required aspects that we expect you to already have so that you will be able to follow the program we what we want to avoid is that we accept you to the program you do not have the knowledge then you start struggling a lot to follow the courses and it it becomes either too much for you to learn all the kinds of things that we that other students already know and maybe that even that you would fail courses because you do not have the knowledge and so even if you acquire knowledge as i don't know online courses MOOCs or any kind of thing or as i said also in the work experience you just need to be transparent in the application so that we can by judge you are able to follow the the master program or not okay and there's a question which is basically two questions. Let's start with the first one. Uh, what will be on my master degree, uh, master of science or, or, or the certificate? Because they are, of course, graduating from two universities and indeed also the IT pro program. Um, maybe Eileen, you can answer, let's say, how that looks like with, with regards to the, the, let's say, the, the, the formal graduation. Yes. Um, so you will get a master of science degree from both of the universities that you, you attend. And you will also get an official EIT label certificate um, since you have studied within EIT Digital Master School. Um, and yeah, there's uh, the graduation ceremony that I believe was mentioned before after the completion of the programs where all of the students from your cohort, from all the programs will be invited and uh, you will meet people from the EIT Digital uh, Network and you will receive this EIT label certificate. That's cool. And the other question that is about job opportunities as a data scientist. Um, mm, I don't know, Marina, maybe because you did find a job as a data scientist. Um, <clears throat> yes, so uh, it depends, of course, on the country. But I think uh, from my experience and yeah, the people around me that I know, because you get like two degrees. So uh, basically in your CV, you have two universities. So I think that should be uh, already a plus because you yeah, got an extensive like list of different courses and different experiences. Um, but what I also think is a big plus for data scientists is the 
uh, innovation and entrepreneurship mindset because it's also a really valued skill uh, in companies these days as a data scientist that you can actually put your ideas into practice, talk with stakeholders, align, and all of the other things which are out there of the regular, like, hardcore hard skills. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's a big plus uh, from what I know. Okay, thanks very much indeed. Then a question, I'm not sure if I understand. It says, I really, uh, I already applied for admission in the autumn 2022 session on the university admissions portal. Can I still apply for this program? Um, that's from- I believe I understand this question and can answer to it. Uh, if I understand you correct, uh, you mean that you have applied locally to a master at one of the partner universities. And correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and if that is the case, then yes, you are still very welcome to apply um, through our admissions portal as well, because these are separate from each other. Okay, hopefully that answers your question. What is the expecting expected learning model for the program this year, hybrid or fully online? Okay, that's 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 a difficult question, but still, Renata. Yeah, that's indeed a very difficult question because it depends on the policies that each country, yeah, and the, that the government of each country. What I can say is that um, most of us, I would say even all of us are already in a hybrid situation and some of us are already fully physical back. So I, I, I wouldn't expect fully online the next year, but we never know how COVID will develop and how the countries will well, modify the policies. Okay. Let's see then for now the final question. I already applied for the first period, but my recommendation letters were ready late. Do they add any value to my CV? And can I upload, upload them now? Yes, yeah, so I believe I can take this question. Um, if you applied in the first period, you can unfortunately not send any documents to us now as the submission deadline has already passed. Okay, fair enough. Um, okay, I take this one and then I believe I'll give the floor to Christian. Um, let's see. In the data masters, is it covered and does it cover anything about cloud computing or cloud architecture? since they are very correlated? Um, not really directly. So in some of the courses, you will need to use cloud computing and clouding and have knowledge on cloud architecture. It's not that we would provide a course on that, but then we would just expect you to kind of learn together with the data science techniques. Also, um... If I can add, uh, I think for the electives, it depends, of course, on your university, but sometimes the electives can be also outside of the regular track uh, if your yeah, the university allows. So then you can pick also courses that are outside of the data science track if um, yeah they're accepted. So that's also a possibility. Indeed. Okay, thank you. Um, before I, I move on, we have seven minutes. Uh, Christian, you wanted to to add something to the discussion, because I see you open the uh, camp. Actually, I see one more question directed to Marina. I'm not sure if you can see it, Marina. It's from Giovanni Manfredi. Uh, yeah, just to read it. OK, thanks. Um, yeah, good question. Um, yeah, I, I'm really happy with the choice I made with the two universities. I really like the the switch, the different switch, and the different types of courses that both universities covered. Um, and the, in regard to the work life um, balance at KDH, to me personally, it wasn't really tough, honestly, like to follow the course. But I wasn't also working. It depends. Uh, yeah, what do you wanna? Yeah, how do you wanna have it? Um, I think it was really doable, and uh, yeah, it's. Yeah, there were a lot of assignments, so a lot of kind of open ended assignments and things and projects to work with your colleagues. So you can really also explore topics that are not basically well, set in stone, but you can define your projects and those kinds of things. And then there are also the exams, uh, but they were not that heavy. Uh, it's more about the project, uh, the project type of work there. 
OK, great. Thank you very much. Um, so Shivam, do you want to have to open the mic or is it a question that you that you posted? Maybe just take this one. The question, I have done a master's in chemistry and working as a software developer um, at a company. What will be a probability to get a mission at EP Digital? So master in chemistry and now working as a software developer. Yeah, I cannot really tell you what is the probability. Again, what we would like to see is do you have knowledge on statistics, programming? Yeah? If, it, if it was from your job or if it was from your master's, uh, in your case, I would say that in chemistry, you might have done some courses in linear algebra or in statistics. Maybe the programming experience we can see from your job. So if we are able to see everything that it's required there, plus in your motivation letter, we understand that we see that you really understood what data science is, that you have a purpose to do data science, then that's what we are looking for. Indeed. So if you don't have the, the, the education, then you should compensate somehow in a clearly way how did you actually, let's say, uh, um, develop your, your experience and your knowledge about data science. Yeah, and we can see the knowledge either in the CV, in the motivation letter, online courses, certificates that you add uh, in any kind of sense. OK. Um, when will the, the applicants know whether they will, are actually allowed into the program or not? Yes, I can take this. Um, I see that you applied in the first period and the acceptance letters are sent out on the 30th of March, so by the end of this month. And if you're planning to apply in period two, any of you who are attending, uh, then remember that the deadline for submission is on the 11th of April. And we will then send out the acceptance letters on the 25th of May. Sounds good. So it seems to be that we have run through all the questions, which is good because we're also running out of time. So I like that uh, to be to be to, to stick within the hour. Um, now again, I'm looking at your question. You wanted to add something, maybe? Okay, please go ahead. Yes, seconding you, Erwin. Thank you so much, Renata, Marina, and Nelly, especially for joining us and answering questions, and all of you uh, coming today. I have good news because we have some more upcoming sessions in the next few weeks because as, as you know, the deadline of the phase two is the 11th of April. So we have a bit more than five weeks to go. So we are trying to organize as many info sessions as possible on the various programs. Uh, we, have, we have one more coming up on cybersecurity, on FinTech, autonomous systems, but you don't have to take notes now because after this email, after this meeting, We'll send you a full up email of uh, with, including all the even right things where you can join next sessions. It won't be organized by Erwin or by, by our team, but our colleagues in Helsinki perhaps as well. So we look forward to, to having you there. And of course, in case of any questions, as Aline said, just you know, send us questions. We'll do our very best to get back to you. And we hope to we hope to have you as part of the Master's School program. Thank okay. you, Erwin. Indeed. OK, Christian, thanks very much. So we're closing the session now. Uh, I want to thank you, let's say, all the all the, uh, the people all around the world to join this session. Of course, all the speakers, uh, Marina, Ellen, uh, um, Renata, thank you very much to, to, to be in this, uh, in this webinar. I think it was really helpful. I hope so. And otherwise, indeed, reach out to us and we will answer your questions as soon as we as, soon as we can. So thank you very much. Enjoy the day, safe day, and a safe, uh, safe, and hopefully we will see you at the kickoff. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye.